and welcome to the video where we're going to be chatting all about variety. So the first thing I want to get into is the idea of kid food and how I really dislike this phrase. So if we think to the typical restaurant kids menu, what do we see here? Well, it's almost always filled with hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries, grilled cheese, macaroni and cheese, quesadillas, things like that. So what do these things have in common? They're brown, they're hot, they lack color, variety, fruits and vegetables. Guys, kids food does not have to be boring and it does not have to be bland, but it's also normal for kids to like these foods. It's normal for us to like these foods too, but we as a culture have decided that kids only like these foods, these carbs and bland foods. So why have we decided that this is the way it is? Why have we decided that kids won't like vegetables? Because this is really so far from the truth. If we give them a chance to be exposed and to learn, and if we help them overcome any barriers that they have to accepting new foods. So when I talk about variety, I talk about that not only in taste, but also in texture, temperature, color, and presentation. And that's all the things we're gonna be talking about in this video. Tips and tricks to get more variety into your kid's diet without having to shop at totally different stores and like completely change the foods that you serve them. So, or the foods that you, your family eats. So let's start with taste. There are a few ways that we can add variety and taste, but the main ones I used are herbs and spices. They're a super powerful way to introduce new flavors to kids without changing the texture or the visuals of a food, unless it's like a super colorful spice or use a lot of it. So herbs and spices, along with dips that we're gonna talk about next, can also be a great tool in your food chaining tool belt, which I have a video on in this course as well. So most all herbs and spices can be added to your child's foods, even infants. Just avoid adding extra salt for children under one year and slowly ease up on the really spicy ones. So example of seasonings to add are garlic, basil, garlic, basil, oregano, cilantro, cardamom, black pepper, paprika, cinnamon, thyme, coriander, rosemary, chili powder, nutmeg, turmeric, and the list goes on. And this doesn't have to be complicated. Like think of your child's favorite meals and snacks. If they're bland, how can you add more kick to them or more spice or more flavor? So like apple slices, try adding cinnamon or cardamom sprinkled on top. They love mac and cheese. Try adding a hint of chili powder or garlic. They're super into French fries like my son is. Black pepper can be really awesome here. Scrambled eggs topped with paprika and or black pepper. Buttered noodles, try adding rosemary or basil. This is a really easy, like a zero time commitment way to add just a little bit of flavor variety and help expand your child's palate. So now let's talk about sauces and dips. These can be a really fun way to add variety and also nutrient density to your kids' meals and snacks. Dips like hummus, guacamole, ranch dressing, vinaigrette, yogurt, tzatziki, salsa, garlic dip, spinach artichoke dip, mustard, ketchup. The list is pretty, extensive, um, just like herbs and spices, there's a lot of room for options here based on what you like, what's culturally important to you and your family, what's available to you. So pick a dip that your child enjoys and introduce it with a food that they might not be a huge fan of. For example, your kid loves ketchup. That's awesome because ketchup can be a huge vehicle for helping your kids to try new food. So serve ketchup with sweet potato fries or oven roasted potatoes instead of French fries. If your kid loves guac, Carrots and guac is a surprisingly good combination or even just switching up the type of chip that you offer with them can be a nice way to help expose them to different types of food and different varieties. As an added bonus, these dips can also add lots of nutrient dense calories for children who you're worried about like poor growth or you want them to make sure you want to make sure that they're getting adequate calories. So um, nutrient dense dips like guacamole that are super packed with fat can be really helpful here. Um, and then dips like guacamole and hummus can also add lots of fiber and dips like yogurt and tzatziki can be a great protein boost and yogurt has like awesome probiotics, calcium, and that itself is often thought of as just like a food, but it comes to be a dip. So I use yogurt as a dip like for waffles and pancakes all the time and adding sprinkles, especially like holiday themed sprinkles is a, is a major win for my kids. So. That's variety in flavor. Now let's talk about variety in texture. So these are like simple ways that we can tweak and help get your child used to changes in their food, but not changing it so much that it's overwhelming. So texture can be really challenging for lots of kids. 
Oftentimes texture and varying texture can be a huge struggle. And this, if this is your family, know that you're not alone. My daughter struggled with texture a little bit like on her hands mostly, but some kids really struggle with eating textures. So, or different textures like chunky or slimy or wet, anything like that. So to start with this one, think about the textures that your kid might struggle with. Common ones might be like mixed textures. So like chunky in liquid, like cottage cheese or slimy like yogurt or guacamole or bananas. Some kids can struggle with that. So are they okay with mushy foods like applesauce or yogurt? Are they okay with mixed textures like yogurt with fruit chunks or cottage cheese or chunky peanut butter? Are they okay with slippery foods like noodles and oil or avocado? Make a list of the textures you think they might be struggling with. Like seriously, take a second, get out your phone or a notepad, write those down and think about how you can modify these textures to make them more pleasing to them. So could you serve strawberries dipped in yogurt instead of strawberry yogurt with chunks and work your way up to that strawberry yogurt with chunks? Can you gradually add more yogurt and make the strawberries smaller? So we're introducing something your child might love like strawberries. Um, and then we're slowly working their, your way or their way up to that texture that they need help with. And it's a slow process. Can you serve the chunky peanut butter and like super extra crispy toast instead of soft bread to make the chunks harder to identify and easier for your kiddo to manage? Can you use applesauce or yogurt just as a dip? Instead of saying, here, eat this whole spoonful of this thing that you struggle with, reframe it. And maybe your child is gonna be more likely to accept these foods. Remember that sensory play and food play can be really useful here. So I have a whole video on that. So make sure you watch that video. Um, and if your kiddo struggles with texture, that video is gonna be really important for you. So temperature, we can also vary food a little bit with temperature, as long as we're staying within like food safety guidelines. This one's pretty straightforward. If you normally serve something hot, is there a way you can serve it cold while obviously maintaining food safety and vice versa? So examples might include overnight oats from the fridge instead of hot oatmeal, um, sauteed apple, warm apples instead of apple slices, cold pasta salad instead of warm pasta, frozen yogurt tubes instead of refrigerated one for kids older than four, so it's not a choking hazard. So that's pretty simple there. But again, just take what your kid accepts and see if you can tweak it a little bit. We just want to get them used to changes in the food that they eat instead of allowing them to get in this rut where they only eat the same thing with no modifications. So we wanna get them used to these changes. Now, color. So for some foods, the change in color does change the taste significantly like bell peppers. So if you serve them a green bell pepper, it tastes way different from a red bell pepper. Like per, per, personally for me, I love red bell peppers, but I'm not a huge fan of green bell peppers. So I think there is a big taste difference. And for some foods, color doesn't affect the taste at all. So examples of this might be like tri-colored pasta instead of white pasta or red quinoa, rainbow baby carrots instead of orange baby carrots and purple cauliflower instead of white cauliflower. These all taste the same as their single colored counterparts. And the purpose of adjusting the color is to help your kiddo feel comfortable with change, to show them that change in the way of food does not always affect the way it tastes or makes us feel. It can be fun and it can be easy to accept small changes. So a color change might be a pretty simple one to try for your kids, especially if it's one that doesn't affect the taste. So this is where you could start if your kiddo really struggles with changes. A great lesson to learn when we go out to eat or eat at a friend's house again, is that their favorite foods often look a little bit different. So we can help teach them this in the safety of our home before they have to experience that outside the home. Now shape. Actually, this probably is a little bit easier to modify than color or like easier for kiddos who are really selective to handle than color. So I'm gonna bump this up to first place here. Um, typically changing the shape of food doesn't affect the way it tastes or feels in the mouth at all. So changing the shape of a food can not only get your kiddo used to trying new things in different ways, but can make the food more appealing or exciting to try. Examples include using cookie cutters to make a sandwich in a different shape. So like before Christmas, make a Christmas tree peanut butter and jelly or a Christmas tree waffle or pancake or Halloween do pumpkin or buy cookie cutters in the letters of their names, using crinkle cutters to slice veggies in a really fun way. And I'm gonna show you my favorite tool for shape. Um, they are these little shape cutters. Get them on Amazon. And I use them for cutting veggies and fruit mostly, Scramb or scrambled eggs, like a flat scrambled egg I use them all the time for, but 
It just is way more fun to eat a cucumber shaped like a star than it is to eat a plain cucumber in the logic of a four-year-old. I guess for me too. But I love those things. I swear they're magical. Any parent who has the means to access those and is struggling with variety with their kids, I recommend those because they're just super awesome. Um, but changing the shape is a great place to start for kiddos, again, who are the most uneasy with change. Um, so we can also adjust the presentation or the way we serve it, and we're, we talk about that in the novelty video, so I'm not, get, not gonna get too much into depth with that here. So homework for this video. Identify your top priority for variety. Could be lunchtime, it could be vegetables, it could be protein, it could be texture, you name it, you know your kid best. Next, identify three ways to incorporate more variety into your child's next week based on this priority. So like, let's say you choose protein, for example. Well, maybe we can use a new spice on top of their chicken nuggets. Maybe we can use a flour to cut their eggs. Um, and then maybe we can, goodness, try a different brand of tofu. Okay, so that would be three different ways that we're introducing small variations to the things that your child already accepts to help them expand their variety. And then we can gradually work our way up to trying a whole new proteins, for example. And we'll talk about how to do that with food chaining and novelty. Those are great tools to do that. Um, so use the guidelines of identifying variety through taste, texture, temperature, color, and shape that we discussed in this video when you're picking ways to expand your child's variety based on this homework. And if your kiddo is comfortable with this, then have them help you identify one way to increase variety based off of these parameters. Have them help you prep that food, which goes along with the cooking video in this course too. And continue to implement these new variety options. Once your child is comfortable with this, repeat the process again and again and again, and continue to help them be comfortable with changes to their favorite foods. And that will help hopefully them to start accepting new ones.